Welcome in everybody! I'm Erin of Erin Bum Paints. Hi, welcome to my tutorial. Um, the idea behind tonight, in case you don't know what's going on, is I'm going to teach you step by step how to recreate a painting. Uh, the painting that we're doing today is the one you see in the bottom right here, this cute little polar bear northern lights kind of mountain type gig. Um, I have a blank canvas here, so I actually paint right along with you, and again I will make it bigger when we start painting. Uh, and I'm going to teach you how I do it. I'm going to go step by step nice and slow, I'll answer questions as we go, uh, I'll tell you what paint colors I'm mixing, what supplies I'm mixing, so if you want to follow along you can. If you want to just watch and learn, you can do that. If you're not even watching and learning, you're just here to hang out with the rest of the chat, that's cool too! We always have a nice big group in here on Friday nights. It's kind of nice to feel a little less alone and to just kind of like party on a Friday all together. So feel free to hang out even if you're not painting. Uh, the supplies I'm using today, I'll be using actually just four different paint colors. I always stick to five or less. Um, so today I'm going to be using red, yellow, blue, <laughs> I see what's going on here, and white. So again, red, yellow, blue, white. There is no black needed today, so just the four. Thank you again for all the support, guys. I will get to all of you. Don't you worry, I'll get all of you. Uh, the brushes I use today, we have three different kinds. They always are the same three. We have a large flat brush, I have a medium round brush, the classic, and we have a small round brush, and I'll be sure to let you know which one I'm using throughout. Um, otherwise, supplies I have include paint water, we have a nice uh, palette. My palette is a lovely volcano plate. It's a plate I've used for five years, the same plate, just stacking paint on continuously. Maybe you have a plate, maybe you have an actual palette, that's great, but I use my volcano plate. And I have an apron. Hopefully you have an apron or something to, uh, you know, get some paint on just in case you get messy. Shout out Terry as always for the apron, thank you so much. Um, and those are all the supplies. What we're going to do first is the nice sky, okay? Uh, we have a nice uh, kind of like green, blue, teal sky. You're more than welcome to change that up, by the way. Feel free to use the techniques I'm teaching and just use different colors. Um, I'm going to start with some light colors. So whatever colors you want, I would start with light colors. I'm going to start with this kind of like really lime green color. So I'm going to grab this large flat brush. I'm going to go to my volcano plate, aka my palette, and I'm going to mix together three colors. I'm going to mix white, I'm going to mix yellow, and just a teeny tiny amount of blue. I just want to make it a little bit green. It's kind of like a yellow green you can see. So uh, lots of white, some yellow, and just a tiny 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 amount of blue if you want it that really vibrant kind of lime green. So I'm just setting that up now on my plate. I'll show you when I mix it and I'll apply it with you. Got lots of thank yous. Also nice. So again, all of those people paid on behalf of all of you to support me for the month. So thanks to everybody for doing that. My gosh. Thank you. And I got an emote out of that. Wow, wow, wow. Lots of white, lots of yellow, a little bit of blue. And again, customize to whatever colors you want. That's the whole point. Make the painting your own. It doesn't have to look like mine at the end. It can be completely different. It can be similar, whatever you feel. I'm going for a really bright lime green. All right, I'm going to start anywhere just kind of like to the left of center and I'm going to start to sweep down. Sweep down, just using the whole width of the brush. And I'm coming down at least two thirds of the way because we're going to have mountains, we're going to have the snow here. So I want to make sure that I'm being generous with my sky. I don't want to have any gaps here. So if anything, go a little lower than you think. You can always cover things up later. So again, kind of swinging down. I really like the look of all the northern lights kind of swinging this way. So down and right, down and right. I like to do a nice big band kind of in the center, you can see. And then I'll start to separate. I'll do a couple just like individual kind of thinner strokes. Again, going the same way, but just leaving some gaps here and there. You can always create gaps later with the other paint colors. So if they're not really forming right now, if maybe you're grabbing like thick amounts of paint and doing thick streaks, that's okay. We can always change it up later with some blending. But yeah, you can see I'm sticking more in the middle right now. Maybe like a little here. And they don't have to go all the way down. They can kind of fade away. We can always blend those a little later. There we go. So start with one color, whatever nice light color you want to start with. Mine is a nice lime green. I'll give you a minute or two. Uh, we're going to want to work a little bit fast just because we want to blend these colors together. So get this color on here and then we're going to go on to a new color to help blend it all out and soften it all up. Mm-hmm. 
Sounds good to you, Shanes. What color did you make? Oh, that's okay, Lynn. Uh, so it's a nice lime green. So lots of white, I would say a medium amount of yellow, and then a tiny, tiny, tiny amount of blue, like the teeniest amount you can grab. Cause you can see it's just a little bit green toned. Uh, it's mostly kind of like a lime green, almost yellow. So lots of white, yellow, teeny bit of blue. <laughs> Thanks to Lurk Dragon. Diana, thank you for gifting. Wow, 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 wow. <laughs> thank you for gifting to Freckle. Freckle, you're now subscribed to the channel on behalf of Diana. Thank you so much, Diana, for doing that. Um, yeah, Freckle, if you have any questions about the subscription, let me know. All good, Lynn, you're fine, you're fine. I'm happy to repeat. Um, yeah, if you have questions, let me know, but essentially Diana is supporting me on behalf of you. You now get ad-free viewing. You can use those little bun emotes that you see people using, the hype volcano plate emote. There's lots, there's lots. Part of the community, look at that. Yeah, fish is healthy, yeah. Depending on what you put on it, but yeah. Mmm, yeah, so sometimes there are ads. I'm happy to wait, Casey, for the next 15 seconds. They shouldn't be popping up often. From what I understand, they pop up when you enter the stream, maybe like an hour in, but I'll wait 15 seconds for you, no problem. If you subscribe, you get no ads, but I understand some aren't subscribed. I'm happy to wait, no worries. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Freckle, it's so kind. I don't even know what you guys are on about anymore. It's fine. Still fish. Go ahead. Oh, Fiddler. So, Marion, somebody uh, gifted you a sub subscription, actually. I'm happy to talk about that in a second. I'm going to move on to the next step, but I'll, uh, I'll answer your question in a minute, okay? So we've got our nice lime green on. Again, we want to work a little quick so we can make sure we're blending. Um, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make kind of like a medium teal. We don't really have uh, this dark color yet. We're kind of doing this in-between kind of blue teal right here. So I'm going to go into my lime green and I'm going to add some blue. Just add some blue in there. It makes it a little more of an actual green tone. It's still a nice kind of like light to medium color, but it's just going to be a nice transition color between the nice lime green and our nice blue. And you'll see it on the canvas here. So something like that, just anything kind of in between our lime green and our eventual dark blue. So what I'm doing is I'm grabbing that paint. I'm applying it with the same brush, by the way, the large flat brush. You don't even need to wash it off. I didn't wash the brush off because I was just kind of dipping into the similar color there. And you can see what I'm doing is I'm framing around the lime green. So I'm kind of stroking on this paint around the lime green. If it overlaps a bit, that's okay. You're just kind of going nice and close in so that we can blend it in a minute. If you like to blend as you paint, maybe you've painted with me before or you've just painted in general before, you can obviously blend as you paint. I personally like to apply the paint first and then I'll do some blending. Um, I am dipping my brush in the water just here and there a little bit. It helps spread the paint around, but it's not super necessary. It's kind of personal preference if you want a little bit of water on your brush. I think I'll add a little more over here, just like off on its own to get more streaks, you know? We don't want to have all of this area just blue, so I'm gonna get some of that blue-green over there. That's probably fine. Thanks, Gray. There's actually, yeah, Marion, there's uh, lots of info there about subscriptions. You can see that little Streamlabs notification there. If you have any questions after that, let me know, but that's a really good uh, kind of quick, quick explanation. Charlene, it's this kind of like greenish teal color. So I mixed a little bit of extra blue into our original color. So a little bit of extra blue into this and that created this. All right, I'm gonna show you some blending now. So what I'm doing now is I'm just wiping in between, in between that lime green and that new color. And you can see what happens is it kind of softens it up a little bit. See that? It's starting to kind of blend together. You're grabbing the wet paint here, the wet paint here with the same brush with no extra paint on it, just kind of using the paint on the canvas and moving it together. And it just softens it all up for a nice uh, soft streaky look. If you ever get to a point where you're trying to blend those two colors and they're not blending, maybe it's just kind of like dry and nothing's like really combining. Um, that just means quite literally the paint has dried a little bit. Acrylic paint dries very fast. Um, so don't rush, just uh, take your time with it. You can always grab more paint on your brush to help kind of reactivate it and to keep it blending. So for example, I'm just going back to my plate and I'm gonna grab a little more of that lime green that we had. And you can use that on your brush if you need to help with blending. So if your lime green is a little dry, just grab a little extra 
stroke it up and down, you can see it starts to blend in together. Softens it all up. So again, don't be afraid to go back and re-add some paint if it helps with blending. You can see that's exactly what I'm doing. It works, it works, it works. And it just creates more colors too, right? That way you don't even just have the two colors, you've got like three or four because they're all blending together, mixing together, softening up. So just keep adding paint as you need it or just keep using your plain uh, brush just to stroke in between the two. That'll help soften everything up. Takes a little bit of work. You can see I'm kind of going over here and there a couple times, but it'll be worth it the more you work at it. Yeah. Da 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 da. There we go. Thank you, Cindy, for the bits. I didn't miss that. Thank you so much. Molly, thanks for the follow. Shay, thanks for the follow. Thank you, Gray, for the explanation. Yeah, Mary and Gray gave you a great explanation. Their subscriptions help support me. And you have a little bun or a circle next to your name. That helps you know you're subscribed. Exactly. You can use the custom emotes. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Cindy, you got it. Yay! James, thanks for the bits as well. Oh, Gray, no way! Gray's got the 10k badge, all right. I need to add a new emote for 10k. I can't believe it. I didn't think anyone would be at that level, but I'll add that for sure. I have some ideas, Gray. When I was playing around with emotes the other day, I had a few more ideas, so I'll get on that. Thank you. That's exciting. That's very exciting. Like a little cozy bun or like a crying laugh. No, I had the crying laughing. What was the other? There were a couple others I wrote down. Anyway, I'll get on that. Thank you. All right, continuing to add again, just continuing to blend. So again, you can see, for example, to blend this, you can grab a little bit of that lime green if you want, or you can just keep it plain with that second color we had we can always blend it with blue i'm just kind of softening up edges by going around the sides here so i have a very streaky middle and again if you feel like you have a little too much of certain colors like the lime green or the kind of teal color you can always use blue later to chop it up so in my original see i've got blue i'm using my mouse to show you blue kind of in the middle there i can always put blue there after so don't worry about it for now we can always add it after mm -hmm. oh so exciting gray Crazy Horse Lady, welcome in. Will this be available for the play? Yep. Uh, Gray's got you covered there. Thank you, Gray. Uh, the YouTube link is right there. Um, so I always uh, upload these to YouTube within hopefully the, the week. Honestly, sometimes it takes me a little bit longer, <laughs> but I'd recommend subscribing to YouTube and then that way you're notified when I upload. And all of my past tutorials are right there already too. So if you want to go paint something else in the meantime while you wait for this one, there's lots there. There's lots there to check out. Mm-hmm. All right, I'm gonna move on to our next color. So it's kind of this uh, dark bluish color here. And again, anything in between you might get as you kind of blend. So uh, keep that in mind too. We, even though we're going on to the darkest color, you still might get some in between colors as we blend. So I'm going back to my plate. I'm washing off the large flat brush, washing it off. If there's a little green on there or a little teal, that's okay, of course. Grabbing blue. And that's all. <laughs> I was just checking the painting there. Yep, plain blue. Plain blue. I'm using phthalo blue specifically, just in case anyone's wondering. Any blue will be fine. All blues will have kind of different tones here and there, but you can really use any blue you have on hand. So this is what phthalo blue looks like. See, it's a nice kind of like bright, almost turquoisey, especially when we mix it, you'll see it kind of come through a little bit brighter. And same thing, you can kind of apply the paint. You can either blend as you go. So blending as you go will involve just kind of streaking a little bit into your other colors to help them blend together right on the canvas. Or you can do my method. My method is kind of adding the color, kind of just blocking out where it will be. And then you can focus on blending all of it together. So I kind of go a little speedier due to that. I like to just like put this on pretty quickly and then I'll go in and blend after. And again, you can overlap. There's no reason that you have to go into blank areas. You can kind of streak upwards and then that way you're splitting up some of your previous streaks. I really like splitting them up personally. I like kind of having all these different, uh, different stripes of color all kind of combining together and ending in different spots. So 
That's my strategy. Like I'll add just a little bit right here, kind of like coming halfway down, maybe a little coming halfway up, just split her up. Gets all those beautiful colors combining and then we can do some blending to soften it all. I just need to grab more blue. I'm running out. And you know, your paint might not be drying as fast as mine. I have a direct light on this canvas and I can tell that it's affecting the paint. I can tell it's drying way quicker than usual due to that. So you might not have this problem. You might be able to just add your paint and blend away versus I'm kind of adding paint and sometimes re-adding paint as I go. So do whatever works for you. And I'm gonna be curious if anyone changed up colors. There's just so many beautiful colors that you can see in the sky, like pinks and purples and stuff like that. I tried to stick to only a couple, even though purples are my favorite. I tried to restrain, I said no purples this time, but I put purple in the snow, so I got it there. Setting's very nice. Thank you, Lynn, thank you, I'm so glad. I'm just glad that everyone likes it. We had an overwhelming yes, so that was really nice. And again, I feel like I can still make it better, so that's exciting too. I can keep improving on it. All right, so again, if you have both your paint colors still wet, so your teal and your new blue, you can just take a plain, clean brush, the large flat one probably, and stroke in between the two. I know that my paint is dry and that's not going to work, so I'm re-grabbing that second color on my brush, and then I'll go in between, and you can see it just softens it up that way. I'm re-grabbing that previous color, streaking down, and that softens up both of those edges a little bit. So again, don't feel like you're doing it wrong if you have to go back. If you have to go back for paint, it's just because the paint dried and that's okay. Acrylic is a speedy little paint. It just dries so, so fast. You go at your own pace, do whatever you're comfy with. And again, colors might cover up. You can re-add them if they get covered. No worries, just keep working at it till you like what you see. Look, I'm covering up this green streak. That's okay, because it's blending the other streak. Pro light strats, right? Pro strats that like actually do my painting no justice because it dries too quickly. <laughs> it's actually a mood light that's on this, by the way. It's not even like real lighting. <laughs> it's my happy light <laughs> for the dark mornings and dark evenings. <laughs> So yeah, streaking the blue down. You can see it just softens it right up. Let's go in here. Loving the colors. Thank you, Ming. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, Christy, as well. Again, I, I did my best to stick to only a couple. I think that was the key, that I stuck to just a couple. So I did kind of my lime green, kind of in-between teal color, and then the nice dark teal, and I think that really helped. Just kind of sticking to a theme in a way, you know, just so it's not too muddy or messy. You could totally do a rainbow sky though. You'll just need to be a little more careful with your colors that they're not all mixing together. Just keep them kind of in their stripes. Combine colors that mix well together. So those are the colors that are close to each other on the color wheel. And uh, you're good to go, yeah. Okay. Now you can keep blending away. I'm still giving lots of time for blending. Um, but I'll point out the last step here. My last step for this painting is to grab a little bit of white and add it in. I find the white just really pumps it up a little bit more. I would say you can see kind of the main difference between the two right now is this is a little less bright and the white is really what brightens it up. So whenever you're ready, again, no rush, no rush. I would get all of your colors on first. And then what you can do is just grab a little bit of white and I just like to streak it on just certain places where it's maybe still a little bit wet so it blends in. So good example is over here. We have lots of blue space. I'm just gonna put a little bit of white right on top of the blue as it's still wet, streak it in, and then now it's just a nice little light streak. You can do this anywhere you want. Again, I try and look for places that are wet, so wet, fresh paint. But if you wanna do it in places where there's no wet paint, I would just put the white on and then you can reapply that paint color to help blend it in. So I'll put on a couple streaks, maybe like here and here. Regrab lime green and just kind of blend it in a little bit. Just softly going up and down, that just brightens it up a little bit more. So you're just brightening it up. I'm gonna get some more white, maybe put it up here. 
I think it wants to be a little brighter up here. So anywhere you think it's looking a little dim in the painting or even just to like split up certain colors, a little bit of white goes a long way. So you just kind of split that up a little bit more, added a little bit of a different tone. Mm-hmm. And that's the whole idea. Just keep having fun with it. Just remember, you can always go back and add paint if you want. There's no reason that says you have to get it right the first try. Get it the second, third, fourth try. It doesn't matter. Just small amounts of paint, just streaking it on. Anyway, yeah, I can't wait to see the results of these. A big part of these tutorials is when uh, people post their photos online after. So just so everybody knows, I always encourage that because I love seeing what everyone painted. It's so weird, like not being able to see as I'm instructing. I want to see what you guys are doing and help and compliment and all that. So just know that we have lots of different places at the end of the tutorial when you're all done to post your paintings. Uh, Facebook is somewhere I recommend and that nice event page if you found us through the Facebook event page. Discord, for those on Twitch are a little more familiar with Discord, that's a great community to go to to post. We have a nice art share channel. I think I'll go a little more here. So you just little amounts of paint. So I'm not caking on the paint because I don't want the canvas to get too overwhelmed with paint. I just like to go little bits at a time and then that way I can stay in control. So just little bits of white. Streaking it up and I want more of that yellow. So I'm gonna go back there Keep taking your time keep playing around. I'll give at least a couple more minutes as I keep playing around too I'm trying to get it as close to my original as possible. That's why I'm kind of going back and adding But again, you should do whatever you want. Don't worry about getting it exact Even if you're using the same colors just streak it the way you want Let the paint blend wherever You'll see even this one will be a little different than my original. It's always important to remember that. They're never going to be exact. HTAP, hey, I'm late. I'll have to watch replay. No worries. If you have any questions, let me know. Um, you can actually watch the replay. I learned this last week. <laughs> I'm so, I'm still new to Twitch. <laughs> um, you can watch the replay right now if you want. Um, if you click my username and then click the videos button, you can click this video and actually start from the start right now if you'd like. And you can kind of like catch up if you want or just take your time, but that way you can chat with me at the same time. So feel free to do that, HTAP, if you like. No worries, yeah. Oh, good night, Lynn, you're on your way out. Yes, you're so welcome, you're so welcome. Maybe I'll see you tomorrow, I'm streaming tomorrow, but if not, have a fantastic weekend because I don't think I'll be on Sunday. Um, but thanks for popping in, it's always lovely talking to you. Yeah, HTAP, again, enjoy. And again, you can still ask questions because the chat will be live. It's really, it's a cool process, yeah. <laughs> or if you feel like it, just, just hang out. If you'd rather just paint another day, you're like, ah, not feeling anymore. That's cool too, whatever you like. It'll be on YouTube later for full replay, so you're good. Maybe a little more white. I just love lightening it up. I'm gonna grab a little more white personally and then we can start to move on. Hmm, let's see, maybe here. Maybe here. And look here, something, there we go. Even if it's still a little bit wet, you can just lightly brush it on. Because it doesn't need to blend all the way in. Some people like it a little more prominent, a little more obviously streaky. So even if it's not totally wet, you can just kind of lightly put it on. And that'll work too. I'm just too obsessed with making this nice light green up here. I could blend all day. Blending is so, so fun. Oh my gosh. Thank you, I'll paint another day. Should I... Sounds good, Lynn. Sounds great. To tours. <laughs> See you later. Yeah, Ming, exactly. The, might, the white makes it look like beans of light. Yeah, I just think it like pumps it up that much more. I think before the white and then after the white is such a huge difference. Such a huge difference, personally. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So again, I'll give another extra minute just in case any of you are still painting. If you have any questions, throw it in the chat right now. I'm fully concentrated on you guys, so let me know. 
can't wait for the polar bears. Me too. They were such a fun little addition right at the end. I painted the whole painting and then I was like, what can we put there? And we're like, polar bears. I love the mama baby. <laughs> the baby polar bear I looked up uh, an online reference for. And I fell in love with one reference because the baby polar bear, just like in my painting, had his foot like fully out like that, his whole leg, as if he was like really taking his big first step. I thought it was so cute. <laughs> I'm ready, you know, it's just like, <laughs> he just looks like he's ready to conquer the walk. <laughs> it's so cute. Mm -hmm. Too tired to paint, nice. Oh, always, Lynn, always, yes. It's always lovely being with you too. Cool cat. And all your emotes <laughs> to tours, it's all you, it's all you. All right, so just as a heads up, next step is messy step. We're gonna get a little messy because we have some beautiful stars to put. We gotta get a little messy for stars. I didn't think that through because my monitor's right here and I'm definitely gonna spray all over my monitor, but that's okay. <laughs> Hopefully you guys have better setups than I do. <laughs> I'm probably gonna find splatters later. Lady Mo, you are. Oh, you're leaving too, Christy? No worries, going to bed. Sounds good, sounds good. No worries, thanks for popping in. I'll see you tomorrow, maybe. I'll be online tomorrow. Okay, so yes, we've got a nice starry sky, of course, our nice night night sky with all the nice northern lights. We need lots of beautiful stars. So I use two techniques for the stars. Uh, the first one I use is messy. So if you'd rather skip the messy one, that's okay. Um, you won't get as kind of more of like the galactic look, but you'll still get lots of stars in there later on. Um, so you can skip the first step if you want, but I'll be getting messy personally. And then the second step is just literally dotting on stars. So it's a little cleaner, a little more in control. So if you'd rather be in control, skip this first step, do the second, or do both like me. Or do just one, doesn't matter, you do whatever you want. Do none, doesn't matter, it's your painting. Um, I'm switching brushes. I'm gonna switch to my medium round brush. <laughs> Classic. <laughs> Any smaller brush will do, like it's not a small brush, it's not a large brush. Any medium sized brush will do, I should say. Uh, what I'm doing on my plate is I'm grabbing a little bit of white and I'm also dipping in my water and then kind of finding a little space on my plate to just kind of water down the white. So I'm kind of like making a little pool of liquidy white. So again, grabbing white, grabbing water in my brush and just kind of moving it around on my plate so it gets nice and liquidy, nice and thin. Mm-hmm. Did some splatter the other day, my glasses were- yep! <laughs> Chair. Oof, oof, oof. Yeah, you always got to think of what's behind and around you. Mm -hmm. See you tomorrow, Christy. So again, watery white paint. Mine is dripping. <laughs> Once you have some watery white paint on your bristles, you can kind of see it there. Uh, the method I like to use is using your finger and pulling back and letting it fly. So I'll show you from the side here. I'm pulling back with my index finger and then I'll just kind of let it go. I'm gonna look right at the canvas though as I do it. See them slightly coming off there? So I'm going nice and tight to the canvas in hopes of not splattering anywhere past me, but I probably will still. Um, but yeah, go nice and close to the canvas just to keep control. I even use my other hand as I go closer to the edges in hopes of stopping things, but you know, I think it's inevitable that things are gonna happen, things are gonna slip past, so just be ready, just be prepared. But that's really the step. Liquid white, medium round, flicking with your finger. Lots of other ways to do this too. Some people pull out old toothbrushes. Those are great because those are very stiff bristles and they just flick the paint right off. Same method though, using thin white paint. Uh, what else? What else? Some people like to do the method where they like slam the brush handle. I find that super messy, so I never do it. It creates some cool splatters, but the paint goes literally everywhere, so I avoid that one. But if you're used to that one, feel free to smack the handle a bit. Yeah, toothbrushes. If there's any others, feel free to throw them in chat. I know people always have their own ways, so there you go. Lakeside, thank you for the 100 bits. My goodness, my goodness, my goodness. Jarek, welcome in. How's it going? How's it going? Happy Friday night. Or a little later for you, I guess, right? Hope you're well. Love when you do the splatter and later find them in your hair, freckling your face anywhere else they land. I know, right? <laughs> Just love it. <laughs> on the walls everywhere, on the ceiling, on the floor. How do they get there? I don't know. Yep, it's pretty wild. Again, I'm trying to splatter this everywhere. I love a nice galactic sky, so I'm really going wild with it. Especially on the blues, you can really see them, but 
I just go everywhere. Fill her up, fill her up. Is it a stiff brush? I wouldn't call mine stiff, no. I would say, see the bristles are a little longer. They're pretty flexible. If you use a uh, toothbrush, it'll be pretty stiff. But otherwise, I'd say they're pretty flexible. <laughs> Portia. <laughs> Splatter everywhere. <laughs> Cindy likes that. Portia. <laughs> Is this your first time here, Portia? I don't know if I've seen you before. I'm just, I'm just wondering. I saw you were gifted this sub earlier, so that's exciting. You're a bun now. The kappa after. You know what you're doing. But yeah, welcome to the community. Little more splatters. I'm just doing a couple more. Just a few more. Why not, right? Everywhere. Okay. Mine's pretty full. I've got lots on there. I think that's pretty good. Rarely here. Discovery through him. Oh, no way! Okay. Yeah, if you if you lurk around, then great. I never look at lurkers. I like to uh, keep them private. I don't expose them. So if you're not in the chat, then I won't know you're here. But thank you so much, Portia. Through Hambina, huh? Cool, cool, cool. Have I seen you in Hambina's channel, maybe? I just feel like I kind of recognize your name, but I didn't think it was through this chat. Are you active in Hambina's chat? Because sometimes I'm there. Interesting. All right, so once you've got the splatters on, then you can start to add some bigger stars, okay? So this is, again, the cleaner method. If you didn't want the messy method, we are now moving on to the next method. <laughs> I'm just using a tiny brush, so my small round brush. I'll be dipping into the plain white paint. I just like to, like, blob it on. You can see there's lots on there. And literally, I just go straight at the canvas, and I'm going to dot on and off. Just, like, grabbing the tip. Boop, boop. Make sound effects if you like. I find it helps me. So yeah, a little more sporadically. You can see I'm not like totally clobbering this with the bigger stars. Uh, I especially like to focus these in the darker areas rather than the lighter ones because theoretically in the light areas you won't see as much light so you probably won't see the bigger stars there. So even like in between, maybe a couple here and there. And as always, get creative with it. If you want to do some little constellations, you can do that. Little hidden objects, you know? Hide some little secrets in your painting that no one else knows about but you. I think that's always cute. And then of course, the more paint you have on the end of your brush, the larger the dot will be. So if you want to like cake on paint for a couple and then do a little less paint or use a little less pressure, you can kind of change up the, uh, the sizes of the stars as well. Lurkers be like, mm hmm. Maybe is disc. Maybe, maybe. I kind of recognize. Again, I uh, might just be uh, me thinking I do. But anyway, happy to hear anyway. <laughs> Through Hambina, that's cool. Yeah, I've watched his speedruns before. I was there for his uh, birthday stream. We raided during his birthday stream, actually. That was fun. Doing art. See, it just kind of twinkles it up a little bit more. So I'm gonna add a little bit more. Add as much or as little as you like. I've got one more feature in the sky. I'm gonna leave a minute or two, of course, just because we just finished those stars, but we have one more feature in the sky after this. Mm-hmm, yeah, lots of fun. Lots of fun, very supportive, all around good human. Yeah. Arch Happy, what's up? Hope you're well too. Welcome in. How have you been? What are you doing on this Friday evening? Ooh, excuse me. Is it like super late for you right now? You're like super, super late. Still Friday evening, I guess. I wasn't wrong. <laughs> Oh, 
Okay, yeah, technically morning. <laughs> 2 a.m. Saturday, gotcha. Not well, not bad. That's good, that's good. Not bad is mostly positive, so that's very good. Any new art you want to talk to us about? You're always busy. I'm just always curious what you're doing because you're always so, so busy. I really applaud you for your motivation. I don't know how you do it. You're like always whipping out so many paintings. All right, so just to point out the last little feature, I did choose to do a little crescent moon up here. I'm circling with my mouse so you can see. <laughs> um, yeah, you can do, again, whatever you like. If you don't wanna do moon, that's okay. You can do a full moon, half moon, whatever. I stick to the crescent shape. Um, pretty much how I describe it, it's just a C shape that has two little points at the end. So you wanna keep the ends very pointy. Um, and then you kind of widen out the moon a little bit as you get a little more on that left-hand side. So kind of like the center, it gets a little wider and then back to thin. So I'm just gonna use the teeny tiny brush with some white paint. And I just start, I'm gonna first of all do it in the top right, just so you know. I just start with a very thin C shape. Just kind of set myself up on the right track here, just kind of keeping everything nice and thin. See, I kind of like curl the edges in a little bit. It's like a very rounded C. It's like almost a complete circle, right? You're leaving a little gap there. Family of seven portrait. Oh, wow. Wow. There's seven. Amazing art, Chappie. I hope we see it. Never guess what I did. What I hear? I hear a train. Choo choo. A for real train. Okay, and then what I do again is I widen out that middle part. So I'm just kind of using my white paint on my small round brush, just kind of widening out that middle, maybe a little bit more. So it gets from thin to thick back to thin. I widen from the inside. If you widen from the outside, it's going to affect kind of the circular shape. So you want to go inside. There you are. That's a little crescent moon. Not wow, they're at a beach and I'll have different tan colors. Not wow. <laughs> it's wow, it's a big family to do. It's lots of different faces and portraits. That's why I'm wowing. Difficult though, maybe? Titan, nice to see you, hello. How have you been? It's been a minute. What's going on your Friday night? Yeah, very, yeah. <laughs> it's a wow. <laughs> it's a wow because it's very difficult, yeah. Again, challenging, but I'm sure you'll nail it. <clears throat> Super busy late with work. Yep, mm-hmm. This looks fantastic. Thank you. How have you been? I've been good, thanks. Um, Just doing the same old <laughs> streaming and painting. We're doing a tutorial right now, so that's why you see the... Uh, completed painting down here. I'm teaching people how to paint it. Um, yeah, he kind of caught us right in the middle here. We're just completing the sky. We're going to do some some snow and mountains next. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, battery exhausted. Real quick, I'm just going to change that. For those who join me for my streams, you know this happens and it's, it's fine. It'll be a quick second. Time me, time me. Quicker and quicker every time. be painting my deer painting <laughs> and we're back there we go have you moved around a little bit like uh my setup has moved around yeah art chappy um i moved my camera way closer to the painting here so it's a little more straight on my head isn't moving in here so that's great um and yeah especially for tutorials this is actually brand new as of tonight so you're in here seeing the first part yeah Hi everyone, canine, finally off work. Good, 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 I'm exhausted. Oh, painting looks beautiful, thank you. I hope you had a good day too, canine. I think it's stats, I think you need an S at the end if you want, um, but yeah, I know you had a really busy day, so I hope you're relaxing and good now. Chuck, welcome in, hello, I love the artwork. Thank you, I'm sorry I missed how you did it. That's okay, um, I actually upload these to YouTube afterwards, so if you wanna learn how I did it, you can go check out the YouTube page, feel free to subscribe, and then that way you know when I post. Um, yeah, it'll all be there, so no worries. If you have any questions in the meantime, let me know. 
If uh, you want to just hang out and chat, you can. There's lots of people here tonight. We can all just chat together and have a good Friday. So whatever you're feeling. See, I mean, I noticed something. <laughs> yeah, you're welcome, Chuck. And again, welcome in. Nice to meet you. Formerly Sneed. Is there a story behind that? Chuck formerly Sneed? All right, so I've left a couple extra minutes for the sky at this point. Hopefully you're all good to go. If not, just keep working at the sky. Like I was saying to a few others, you can always check this out on YouTube after. You can even go into my videos right now and rewatch this as we do it. So if you ever need to like take a quick break or anything, just take your time. Um, but what I'm gonna move on to is the mountains. I'm just gonna do the base of the mountains here. Um, so I get a nice dark purple, I'm gonna lay down the base, and then that way we can work on the snow and then go back to the mountains for the nice highlights and lowlights. Um, so yeah, even though the mountains look very dark, they almost look black, I promise you it's purple. It's a nice dark, dark, dark purple. I made a point in this painting to use only colors and no black. It's dark purple here, dark purple there. Um, just the contrast makes it look very, very dark. I'm gonna go to a medium round brush, of course. <laughs> and I'm going to mix together red and blue, just red and blue. We want to keep it nice and dark, so just those two colors are needed. Just someone, oh, thanks, Titan. Yeah. Sorry if you didn't know that. I need to talk about that more. Honestly, I never talk about the fact that all of my tutorials are there, so I need to do that more. Thanks, though. Simpsons. Oh, okay. I've never. Yeah, I don't watch The Simpsons. <laughs> I was never into it as a kid, never really grew to, grew to watch it, so there we go. <laughs> Pajamas, hugging my- oh good, hugging Duke, that's good. I'm glad, I'm glad. So red and blue, everybody. Pimidge, welcome in. Wait, let's oh, sounds good. Yeah, no worries. Thank you very much. Feel free to hang out in the meantime, but otherwise enjoy your Friday. You can check out tomorrow if you like. Mm -hmm. I'll wait on this for a <laughs> not wait. Work on it. I gotcha. I gotcha. Hugging for me too. Oh yeah. Give all the hugs for all the people in chat right now. Give 114 hugs, <laughs> please. <laughs> Three work in progress. To excellent, chat. We can't wait to see. Love for all. Can you give a 10 second version of how I did it? <laughs> Light green, medium green, blend, teal, blend, Bla splatter stars, dot the stars, moon. Hope that worked. <laughs> Dioxian purple. I believe so. Um, honestly, Marion, I, um, I'm not very well rehearsed in like specific paint colors like that, like dioxin purple. I'm sure it would be fine though. Just any dark purple is good. Okay. So I got my purple ready to go. And I know it's kind of funny because we're kind of floating in the sky right now. There's no real snow for reference, but I'm just choosing anywhere kind of in this bottom third, I would say, and over on the right hand side. And I'm going to do some mountain shapes. So purple on my brush. And I'm doing these uh, very kind of like horizontal, flat triangle shapes. I don't like them really like super, super um, pointy, tall. I try and keep them a little bit flatter. So you can see I'm just starting anywhere I want and I'm just kind of curving up, 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 creating a little point and then I'll curve down, down, down. So it's like at the point you're curving a little quicker. So at the point you're gonna go down quicker, but then as it levels out on the sides or as it goes down to the sides, it levels out. So you're getting more and more horizontal. That's what the curve is for. Not all mountains are like that, but I just like that for this painting personally. I'm just kind of continuing to fix it up as I go, creating a nice little tip coming back down and then filling it in, of course. You can be nice and messy filling it in. You can see I'm just kind of filling in that middle part, bringing it down a little bit. The snow will help cover it up later. I'm gonna do that two more times. I'm gonna make a taller one and then an even taller one. So they can kind of overlap. I'm gonna start the next one right around here. Whoop. Whoop. Same thing, fill it in. And then one more. It says hello to everyone to keep painting. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> Thanks, love for all. <laughs> if you want like a, a real version of how I did it, you can always rewatch the video, but that was fun to try and do a 10 second. <laughs> Hopefully you caught it all. <laughs> boom, 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 done. If only it were that easy, right? 
Put this here, put that there, blend it, splatter, done. Yeah, my last one kind of fell off a little bit on the side, that's fine. Bring it down a little more just in case. And again, change those up if you want to make the middle one taller, make more, make less mountains, feel free. You're just kind of floating them wherever you want. And just know we'll use the snow to kind of cover them at the base in a minute or two. And unlike me, you will want to try your best not to keep touching it because we want this to dry. <laughs> so yeah, do as I say, not as I do. Um, stop adding paint. If you're all done, just, just stop. <laughs> just stop messing with it. I just... I just keep wanting to mess with it. Um, yeah, we want it to dry eventually. We'll have some time because we're adding snow, but we will want to put some color on top of here. So just so you know, we do want that to dry. Um, a good thing to do is to kind of even out the paint. So if you have any large bumps, you can just kind of, kind of push them in a little bit and that'll help even out all that stuff. If I started painting, it'll probably look like a drunk bear tried painting. Maybe it will, maybe it won't, but you should try and find out. A drunk bear, that's interesting. Why a drunk bear though? Why not a drunk Porsche, for example? Why is it bear? What would a bear do specifically? Like chop at the painting? <laughs> Chappie's right. As long as you have fun, it doesn't matter. That's why I said like, maybe it will, maybe it won't, but oh well. Janellum, I failed grade nine art and my first painting from a tutorial was not terrible. There you go. <laughs> so many people have told me that, Jell. Not failed grade art, grade nine art, but like they said, I hated art in high school or my teacher told me I wasn't an artist. And I was like, that is the saddest thing I've ever heard. <laughs> to have an art teacher be like <laughs> discouraging kids at that age and saying, you're not, you're, this isn't a thing for you. What the heck is that? <laughs> I'm so glad you tried it again despite failing grade nine art. I'm so, so glad. Akin to a drunk bear dancing, okay. Whatever you think, but again, you won't know till you try. Didn't do art till I was 20 -ish. You can start any time. Yep, Chappie's right about that too. Will it be what it wants to be? I think so too, K9, yep. Especially with like blending and stuff, you just don't have to worry. Just like, let it go. Just let it go as they, they say in Frozen, you know? If you're ever in doubt, just, uh, just ask Bob. He'll always give you some encouragement. See how it fades right into nothing? That's just what we're looking for. Thanks, Bob. All right, I've got my mountains on. Hopefully you do too. I'm gonna start adding some snow. All right, so the snow you can see in my original here takes up about the bottom third, maybe a little bit more of the painting. And it just kind of like flows down, just a nice kind of curve down, maybe a curve up, back down. Yeah. Nice and drifty, nice little landscape. We use it to kind of clean up the bottoms of the mountains so the mountains look further out in the back. And uh, we'll kind of streak in some colors too. We'll do some more blending. You can see I have some purples, some pinks, some blues. We're just gonna streak those in right on top of the wet white paint. It's gonna soften it all up and get some nice beautiful colors in there. Um, so I'm gonna switch back to the large flat brush. I'm gonna load up my plate with some white because mine is all gone again. And again, we want to use lots of paint because we want this to stay wet so that we can blend in some different colors after. So large flat brush, lots of white paint. I'm just putting it all down here. I'm going messy at the start and then I'll kind of clean up that top edge. But for now, just plopping her on, slapping it on the canvas. That's what I say, I slap it on the canvas. Super professional art terms, always, always, always. Slap it on. So lots of white, and then you can kind of <clears throat> go a little bit slower when you're on that top edge here. So I'm gonna start maybe a little higher up. I'm gonna curve down.
I'm gonna curve maybe like a little bit back up and just making sure you're closing gaps. So if you need to, you can kind of raise the snow up a little bit to close some more gaps. Apparently I need to do that, so I'm just gonna adjust my snow level a bit. Curve a little up, curve a little down. There. Now it looks like the mountains are pushed backwards because we've overlapped them a bit. VK, thank you for following and welcome in. I just saw you there. We don't have alerts on because we're doing a tutorial, but hi, how are you? Really happy with my Everest paintings. I've raised 1,000 pounds. Wow, the couple days. No way! Did that just start your auction? Because I know you've had those Everest paintings done for a minute now. Lindsay, I'm late. Will this be available? Yes, of course it will. It's always available on YouTube, eventually. <laughs> I try and get it up within the week, but sometimes a little more. The YouTube uh, link is right there, Lindsay. If you want to click it, I just put it in chat for you. And this will be uploaded to YouTube later. Uh-huh, uh-huh. And they always are. You can find all my past tutorials there, too. I almost drank my paint water instead of the wine. I'm cut off. <laughs> you know your limit. <laughs> It's when you start to drink the paint water. We can all relate. <laughs> Ninja, welcome back in. Started putting a drink up on my... Yep, that's, uh, that's exactly why I use one of these. It's straw, it's a, it's a lid. I don't put the, the, the brush in the... That's what I always did is I put the brush in the wrong spot, so... Thanks, Portia. I'm good, thanks, VK. Yeah, so just so you know, we're doing a painting tutorial right now. So some people are here just chatting and having a good time watching. Some are following along with me, so... Feel free to do either. If you want to whip out your paints and get inspired, feel free. If you just like watching and chatting on a Friday night, welcome in. I do this weekly. I stream in between then too as well, doing more art. So on Twitch a lot <laughs> from drinking hot painting. A couple of days ago, congrats Chappie. That's really, really something to be proud about. Yeah, you're welcome, Lindsay. If you have any questions in the meantime, feel free to hang out, let me know. Relax if you want in here. Otherwise, uh, enjoy when you see it on YouTube. All right, so again, fresh white paint on my hand in the canvas. Um, yeah, nice and wet. So now what we can do is we can blend in some different colors. I chose three different colors to blend in because they're like my free, three favorite colors. We have blue, we have pink, we have purple, and just soft amounts of each, so just little amounts. So for example, I'll start with a little bit of blue. I'm gonna use the same brush. I didn't even wash it off. And you see that little corner? <laughs> that tiny corner has a tiny bit of blue on it, just a teeny bit, so that when I streak it on, only a little bit comes off and I can just softly blend it in. So I like to kind of follow the flow of the snow. It's kind of going up to down. So I'm just doing a nice little soft curve like this, you know? The more you go on top, the more it'll blend in because the blue will start to combine with the white and kind of soften up. So if you want it a little more prominent, you can just do a couple streaks. If you want it softer like me, just keep blending. If you want it even softer, Grab more white, grab more white. You can go on top and softly blend it in even more. So I got blue there. You can do a little pink if you want. So I'm just grabbing a little red. And when the red mixes with the white, it'll turn pink. So here we go. Same thing, just kind of applying it right on top of the white, allowing it to blend and smooth out. Again, grab more white if anything's not blending, if it's getting a little too bright. Again, the white paint will be drying as you do this, so you might have to reapply white, so just don't be afraid to do that. For example, I know it's getting dry over here. I'm just going to whip on a little more white, and then I'll grab my red in a second. There we go. Do another pink streak right around here. And again, you don't have to follow the exact spots. If you want to, you can. But otherwise, I'm just really picking just trying to base it on my original, but in the end, it doesn't matter where they go. I just try and keep them somewhat separate so they're not fully combining. But the good thing about these colors is if they do blend together a little bit, they'll just create more beautiful colors. Blue and red blend beautifully together into a nice purple. And of course, we're going to add purple next, and that'll blend nicely into pink and blue as well. So there you go. So I got blue, I got pink. I'll give you a quick minute and then I'll do purple just to make sure uh, we're all set here. I'm so excited. I was working on a nutcracker and I'm not liking it so much, but this is working nicely. Oh, good, good. Wait, 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 wait. You're painting this on a nutcracker? You were working on a nutcracker. Like you're doing a different design or this design? 
<laughs> Always a great group. Oh, thanks, Kano. I'm very relaxed. He's going, yes. Thank you. Oh my gosh, did we pass? Oh my gosh. We passed uh, 1550. Ah! That's a new one as of today. That's crazy. So we're like getting closer to 1.6. Oh my gosh. Faye, welcome in. Very pretty. Thank you so much. I'm uh, teaching people how to paint it. If you want to paint it too, just so you know. <laughs> we're about halfway through, but you can always re-watch re it on YouTube if you want. Otherwise, uh, enjoy the vibes. Wow, that was a quick battery. I'm just going to grab more. One second, guys. <laughs> that shouldn't have been that quick. One minute, I'll be right back. battery too fast. There you go. We back. Oops. Separate painting. Now I'm doing this one. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. Cool. Cool. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> All right. So I had one more color to add to the snow. Um, I'm just doing a little bit of purple. So it's kind of like the nice in-between of the blue and pink, right? With just a little bit of purple in there. So I'm grabbing white paint on my large flat brush. I'm just reapplying some white because I know mine is dry. If you know yours is wet, you don't have to do this step. I'm just reapplying right now because I know mine is bone dry because of that white. And you can grab some purple. So just as a reminder, purple was made by mixing red and blue. Um, and it'll appear dark on your brush, but once you apply it to the white, just in a small amount, it will turn lighter. So don't worry if it looks a little dark on your brush, just make sure there's only a small amount on there. And then when you streak it on top of the white, it'll turn nice and light as well. Just to keep them all kind of soft. I like them all nice and soft together personally, but again, that's your own choice. If you want a little darker, add some more paint. Oh, no, no. A little more here. Blend, blend, blend. I think I said it before, but yeah, if you ever get it too dark of a color, just grab white right on your brush and go on top. It'll help cover it up and just kind of blend it out, smooth it out. And it's okay to leave white spots too. You don't need to have it all colored. I kind of like the idea of having white kind of streaking in as well. So don't feel pressure to keep adding color if you don't want to. Ninja, are the supplies for your tutorials fixed? What is this? Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, the only time I've done special supplies Ninja is I did a, an abstract type tutorial and I used different uh, brushes. I actually used a spatula. <laughs> that is the only time I've switched it up. <laughs> All the other times I stick to the same five paint colors. Thanks, Gray. Yep, all of those right there. Yeah, the about section, that one works too. Um, if anything, I use less than those. Like for tonight, for example, I'm not using black paint, but I'm using the other four. So I don't, I don't divert for that exact purpose. I want everyone to be able to like have the same supplies every time and just know that that's what they need. I use the same brushes, the same canvas size even, but you're welcome to change up the canvas size. So yep, they are fixed. Thank you, Gray, again. Jackie, thank you for following and welcome in. If you have any questions, let me know. Just giving a quick minute in case anyone's still doing that snow. I just noticed in my sky that I have a shooting star. <laughs> I think I remember adding that at the last step as per request by the Twitch chat when I was making this live on Twitch last week. So I'll be sure to do that uh, at the end, just in case anyone spotted that and they're like, Aaron skipped a step. I'll, I'll go back to that. Sorry. <laughs> I just noticed it. If you want to learn to do a shooting star, I will teach you. I will teach you. Yeah. So for those who don't know, when I'm creating these paintings, I'm also live as well. So if you ever want to just watch me create a painting, it'll be slower paced. I won't be teaching it, but I'll just be kind of like creating it over a five, six hour period. I usually do that during the day on weekdays. Um, yeah, feel free to check me out. It's on Twitch, same place you are now. You can just check me out at any other time and I'm painting or doing something, chatting. 
Um, but sometimes in creating tutorial paintings, and I like to ask the chat what they think of them and to tell me what to add. So if you want to contribute to these paintings, that's a good way to do it. Jackie, good to see you. Been a while for me. Hmm. Yeah, it's been a minute. What have you been up to? I assume you're not painting tonight because you just popped in or you just followed at least. But uh, yeah, are you planning on painting this one or just here to chat and have some fun? Either way, welcome in. Glad to see ya. But yeah, um, people on Twitch, all the chatters on Twitch have helped me with multiple paintings. <laughs> you probably don't even know how many paintings they have helped me with. Just with suggestions or like what I can change, what I can add. It's really cool. It's really cool. All right, so my snow is done. So I'm gonna move on to some trees now. I'm just gonna give a little bit more time for our mountains to dry. Mine are pretty dry, but just to like get the base of our trees on, we can maybe work on that first and then we'll move back and back and then the polar bears and then the shooting star, of course. So the trees that I have here, um, I call them classic Bob Ross trees. <laughs> they are classics. If you've ever seen Bob Ross do a tree, you're probably gonna hear me say the exact same things as he does. We use slightly different brushes, but all the same technique. Um, and I'm just gonna do two because sticking to his usual quote, every tree needs a friend. I couldn't just add one, I needed two. So there are gonna be two here. Uh, the brush I'm gonna use is a medium round brush. Classic, medium round. And I'm going to dip into my dark purple. So the same color we use for the mountains, it's gonna be the same color for the trees. So if you need to remix, it was just red and blue. So it creates a nice deep dark purple as our base. Okay. I'm even gonna zoom you in because I can do that kind of stuff now. We can like do this kind of thing where I show you nice and close and I'll zoom out, okay? So I'm gonna do two trees right here. So I like to start again, medium flat brush, purple paint, and I'm gonna start with a nice trunk. So I'm just going to use the tip of the brush. You can see I've kind of flattened the brush a little bit, see how it's kind of wide and then thin? It's because I just wiped it on my plate. And it's gonna do a nice straight line, relatively straight line, if it doesn't have to be perfect, because we're just gonna cover it up in a minute. <laughs> so there it is, that's our beautiful trunk. <laughs> it's just gonna sit there. It's just kind of a guide for the next few steps, so don't worry about making it perfect. So here, listen, learn. Sounds good, Jackie. If you have any questions, throw it in the chat. Chat's a little quieted down, but you'll see. Maybe they'll get rambunctious again. You can feel free to join in on the combo. Otherwise, yeah, relax, learn, have fun. Okay, um, grabbing more purple. Again, I flattened my brush a little bit just by wiping on my plate. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hold it like this, so it's kind of angled on the canvas. So if I just switch it like this, you can see it's angled like this. I'm not straight at it. I'm not up and down. I'm angled. I'm going to start right at the very tip top just by lightly tapping the very tip of the brush so that barely anything comes off. Just kind of like little dabs come off. See that? Just tap, tap, tap with the very tip of the brush. I'm going to keep moving down and I'm going to tap a little bit harder. Just a little bit harder so that more bristles are touching. So it gets a little wider. And then eventually I'm gonna start tapping even harder and moving my brush like a little left and right as I tap and move down. Left, right, left, right. See how I'm starting to move a little left and right as I tap and come down the trunk. Tapping even harder, moving even further left and right. So I'm trying my best to make a very gradual triangular shape. It's staying very, very tight at the top and then slowly coming out. Tap, 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 tap. Now I'm not too worried about the middle right now. You can see the middle is like a little more open. I'm gonna fix that in a minute. For now, I'm really just kind of looking at the outsides. Chrissy, can I use the fan? Oh, you can use a fan brush for sure, Chrissy. Good question. Yeah, so Bob Ross, I think usually uses his fan brush for this. So I mean, do as Bob does, use the fan brush. I'm only not using a fan brush because I keep the brushes consistent with each tutorial, but of course you can, of course you can. Let us know how it turns out. 
because that's kind of what I'm doing. I'm kind of like wiping the brush here so it kind of looks like a fan brush. You can almost see the roundedness of it. It's not quite as dramatic, but it's the same idea. The other thing I'm doing, which I'll note, I'm kind of tilting these down a bit, especially at the bottom, because I like the idea that they're really like weighed down, they're really heavy, so they kind of start to tilt a little bit more versus these guys up here. I was going kind of straight in and out, and then I started moving them down. And you can see it gets maybe a little messier at the bottom because you're pressing a little harder. These are more like blobs here. That's okay. I'm not worried about what's going on close to the trunk anyway. I'm just kind of looking at the outsides. And I'm going right down to the bottom of the trunk. Just kind of covering it all. Use it if you like. Mm -hmm, exactly. That's most important. That's a good point, Groki. In the end, like, you could probably use any brush for any of these things. Some might be a little less efficient, but you could use whatever you want. Um, in the end, it's whatever you're comfy with. You, you start to learn the more you paint, like, which brushes you like. Some people hate the medium round brush. They like a medium flat brush, for example. You can switch that easy. Mm -hmm. All right, so the last step I do is I kind of go back and I fill up the middle a bit. See, I'm just randomly tapping close to the trunk here. So I'm leaving the outsides so that they're a little more gapped, but I'm just filling in the middle. There we go. And you don't even need to go all the way to the top because that's pretty filled up. But that way you get a little bit of separation on the sides while also having a nice full middle. There you go. That's one. I'll do another one. It's the same technique, same thing again. I'm just doing a second one. I'll go slow again, kind of explaining what I do. So the second one I'm going to go beside over here and I'm going to do it a little smaller just to change it up a bit. So lightly, lightly, lightly tapping at the top, a little harder as you go down, moving left and right. And you can see I'm really generous with the top because I have a bad habit of getting like way too excited at the start and I go bam, 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 like really hard. And then that looks very top heavy. So I really try my best at the very top to really leave a very pointy top with almost nothing. And then that way I can always add more later if I want. It's easier to kind of add less than you think and then add more later versus doing the opposite, adding too much and then being stuck with a little too much. I'll teach you what to do though to fix that in case anyone did that, they got a little too excited. That's a second tree. Right, I do all this with just my fingers. My gosh, amazing, congrats. <laughs> do whatever you like. <laughs> I have a crush on the three eight angle shader. There you go, yeah. I don't use any angled brushes. And it's wild, like when I do my own personal artwork too, Jackie, I use the same three because I'm so used to them at this point. <laughs> Sometimes I'll whip out a fourth, but rarely. And that's just because that's what I'm used to. It doesn't mean it's the right or wrong way. It's just like what I've learned with. So there you go. So in the event where like, here, I'm gonna show you, maybe your tree looks top heavy like this and you're like, oh no, I just pressed a little too hard and it looks like really lopsided. An easy way to fix it is to just make it a little taller. So I'm just using the tip of the brush and I'm moving it up a little higher. That way you have more room again. You can tap maybe a tiny bit if you want, but I would just probably leave it. And then you're just kind of filling out the rest to kind of match what you have. So I'm just kind of moving these out a little bit more. And that way it still stays nice and gradual, getting bigger and bigger. Yeah, see, fixed, saved. There you go. Ruined, saved. Cool. Hey, finally here to learn. Mills, welcome in. If you have any questions, let me know throughout. I'm just uh, kind of in the middle here of the painting. I'll zoom out to show you now that we've done our trees. Da -da -da -da. But yeah, feel free to let me know if there's any questions in the meantime. You can always rewatch this if you want to learn from the very beginning. But yeah, welcome in. Thank you, CJ. Appreciate you. Ninja, thanks for contributing to the blindfolded painting challenge. That's a thing I'll be doing soon. Assuming we reach that goal, which I'm sure we will. Do, 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 do. 
Yeah, always, Mills. Glad to see you again, by the way, yeah. See? 50%, man. We're 50% complete. Thanks for contributing, Mills. Appreciate you. That'll be fun. I'm really looking forward to that. I think that's gonna be hilarious. See, on Twitch sometimes, guys, I do, like, random events like this, uh, like the blindfolded painting challenge. It's just a little community challenge I have going on right now. So if that challenge is met, I'll be painting kind of blindfolded live on Twitch. Um, I don't know if I'll have a literal blindfold. Maybe I will, but my idea is I still want to look at chat, just not my painting. So I don't think I'll have a literal blindfold, but I won't be looking at my painting at all. It's going to be like chat leading me through it somehow, I think. I still have details to work up, but I think it's going to be really funny. Terry, good evening. Nice to see you. How's it going? Have you been here painting? You're just popping in to say hi. It's always lovely to see you. Giving one more quick minute in case anyone's working on the trees, and then I'm going to pretty up our mountains a little bit. Do some mountain work. Thanks, Luigi. Welcome in. Nice to see you. Got a new setup today. You can see the uh, the goal here, what I painted last week and what I'm painting now. And me. There's three windows. Wow. <laughs> Many cameras. <laughs> Hope you're well, Luigi. Painted other one took longer than I thought. Oh yeah, you paint all the time. <laughs> busy, busy every day. Paint this later, sounds good. What did you paint today? Hey, good thanks to Luigi. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's been a long day. I had a stream earlier today, had a couple hour break, now tutorial time, but doing well otherwise. Thanks for asking. And I'm great, that's good, that's good. It's always good to hear when people are great, you know? <laughs> A lot going on in the world right now, so if you're feeling great, that's really, really good. Mmm, okay, okay. I picture kind of like a snowy scene for that one. Mm. I did a deer recently, but that was in the fall. Don't have any deer in the winter yet. Mubin, welcome in! How's it going? How's it going? Good to see you. All right, I'm going to pretty up my mountain. So I'm going to add some little details here. We have um, in my original, we have kind of like a snowy side and then more of a shadowed side. On the shadowed side though, I still do add some different colors. So I have like this nice medium purple and that way it still makes it look rocky. If we were to just use the dark purple, it'd look kind of flat, you know? So the medium purple still keeps it shaded while adding some texture. We love our texture here. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to do the white first just so it stays nice and clean. And then I will do some medium purple kind of on the other side. Uh, I'm gonna use, surprise, surprise, the medium round brush for that. And just a little bit of white paint on my brush. I don't wanna blob it on, I just kind of wiped it on a little bit. There's no big blobs of paint, I just kind of wiped it from my plate, so not a lot on there. Just locked in, okay, just watching. Sounds good, yeah, yeah. Lots of people here just watching tonight, so you're, uh, yeah, you're in the right place, all good. Okay, so I'm going to be highlighting the right hand side. Um, I'm going to start with this mountain here. In my original, I made the middle mountain closest to us because you can see it's overlapping the other ones on both sides. So I'm going to start with this one and then work my way around. So little bits of white. I'm starting at the very tip top and I'm just going to kind of scrape my brush. I'm going to zoom you in a bit because I can do that now. I'm just going to very lightly kind of scrape or drag my brush down on the right hand side. Very lightly. So you can see how there's like little gaps in the white. You can kind of like lift your brush up and down as you go as well. So they're not large streaks, but more so just a small amount of paint is coming off. It's transparent. You can kind of see scratches through it, kind of see the purple through it and just covering the right hand side. So I'm concentrating on this right hand side, kind of bringing it down into the other mountain so you can kind of overlap like this. And then I'm also going to look at this edge here, kind of in the middle. Um, I personally don't like to leave it this straight. I kind of like it zigzagging a little bit. So I'm going to purposely move the white a little over, for example, maybe a little over here. And then that way it looks even more rocky. It's kind of like hitting certain edges of the mountain, kind of coming down like that. 
that's all I'm gonna do. You can add maybe a little more white if you want some brighter spots, like maybe some bigger piles of snow, like at the top, just kind of cake it on a little bit more. But I really don't like to do that too much because I like the texture. I like being able to see through it and it makes it look a little more rocky, right? After watching your streams, I really want to start painting again. Ah! That's my goal, Luigi. I want everyone painting. That makes me so happy. When are you going to do it? When are you going to do it? You should follow along with the tutorial that'll get you started and then you can like do whatever you want after. Just get some inspiration, some motivation. I love it. That makes me so excited. Please do. All right, I'm going to do the same thing on the other two. Um, the only difference is this one I want to be a bit careful with because I will be overlapping the shaded side onto this one. So I want to pretend that the edge is kind of continuing down like this. And I want to make sure the white doesn't continue on top of that. So I'm imagining there's a little border right here and I'm not going to cross it. Otherwise I'm doing the same thing, just a little bit of white on my brush, kind of dragging, tapping, kind of lifting as I, as I go here. Very messy leaving some gaps, again zigzagging a little bit down so it's kind of coming in and out a bit, and again pretending there's a little little borderline like right here, so I don't want to go past that. Just if you go a little past that's okay, we can cover with purple, but I was trying to keep that edge nice and clean right there. Again maybe you want a little more white just to kind of cake on here and there. There we go. That's two. And number three is easy because we're not worried about any borders. It just kind of falls off the other side. Same thing though, a little bit of white, medium round brush, dragging down. And you can even like go further to the left if you want. It doesn't have to go right down the middle. If you want more snow, just like make this edge go even further. It all kind of works out. The mountains kind of do whatever they want as they go down in terms of the edge and like the highlight and the face, so. If you want more snow, just zigzag it right in there. There's some stuff I'm missing for painting, but after I get it, I will start following. Sounds good. Yeah, if you have questions about materials, I'm happy to answer them. I'm not well rehearsed in like all materials because I use very specific ones all the time. <laughs> happy to talk to you about mine <laughs> and to give you other like light recommendations, but yeah, all good. And all my materials I use, I can I can link here right here actually. I've got a supplies command now. Wow, wow, wow! There you go. That's what I use. It's all flexible, though. I'm sure you know. Okay, so I'm gonna do the other side. It's the same technique, just a slightly different color. I'm gonna use the same brush, the medium round brush. And I'm using like a medium purple this time. So not the dark purple that we had. It's gonna be a little bit lighter. So if you have any purple on your plate, you can use a little bit of white paint and just mix it in. That'll make it more of a medium purple. If you need to mix another pile, it's just red, blue, and a little bit of white. So like a medium tone purple. It's not super light, it's not super dark, just anywhere in between. Same thing, we don't want a lot of paint on our brush. We're just going to be kind of dragging it down. This time I'm going on the left hand side. Same thing though, kind of like dragging, lifting up and down a bit, allowing some gaps to pull through, very lightly touching, and then that way it stays nice and textured. And, and, I do like to add a teeny amount of this in and amongst the white. I kind of pick out little gaps and I just like to splice in a tiny bit of this purple just so there's like some spots that aren't super dark but aren't super light with snow. I just like to just tap that in a little bit. It makes a little bit of a difference, not much, but I think it's enough that, you know, I added it in for a reason, so there you go. Have you used the large flat on the background? Yes, yes. 
pretty much anywhere where there's like a large amount of paint mills is where I use the large flat. It's not usually for like a technique reason. It's just like efficiency. It's a bigger brush, lots of paint in the sky, for example. So large, large flat, large flat was the snow, you know, so. Oops. Just continuing along, same thing. Oh, we left the white on there by accident. And again, we want this one to overlap. You can choose whatever mountain you want to be foreground, but I'm choosing this middle one. So I'm making sure that I'm kind of continuing that down over top of any white that I had. And you know what? Again, if you make a mistake, something you don't like, don't worry about it. You can always go back with the dark purple. You can cover things up. You can even use the dark purple and scrape it on top of your other colors. That would work too. It doesn't really matter the order. So just always know you can always go back, retry if you want, but also go easy on yourself too. That's fine right there. Makes sense. Mm -hmm. The only other time mills that I use a large flat for like technique is sometimes I use it for trees. If I'm doing thin branches, I really like the large flat and that's really personal preference. I've learned to use it that way. So that's really the only time I use it abnormally. Next time we do a step by step, anyway, hopefully turn it. I hope so. I'm doing one next Friday, Luigi, if you're interested. I'm going to do um, a nice Christmas tree. Lots of Bob Ross trees in this one, but a nice, uh, I'll give you a nice zoomed out version in a minute, but yeah, I'm doing that one on Friday and maybe one Sunday. I'm trying to get a design ready for Sunday. If I can get that done, then I'm gonna do one next Sunday as well. Just cause there's like a lot of cool winter holiday paintings that we can do. And I wanna make sure we're doing those in December. So if I can come up with a good idea real quick, you might see me Sunday as well. Next Sunday, next Sunday, not this one. Sunday will not be online. All right, splicing that into the white. And again, I made sure to stop. You can see I made sure the white was kind of continuing on top. I didn't want to overlap this side. All right, I'm gonna zoom out just so you can get a nice overall view. Oops, zoom out. View of what we've done. There we go. Now that I'm zoomed out, I'll show you next Friday's painting too. There we go. So just a nice bright sky, nice snowy bottom, nice, nice cutesy little star, lots of little colorful Christmas balls, ornaments. It's going to be a nice cute one. Yeah. I'm excited. Yeah, I have at least one or two ideas for holiday paintings, and I don't think we have a lot of Fridays left in December. <laughs> Christmas is on a Friday. I won't be painting on Christmas. <laughs> um, I'll be with my family. Uh, so we have like one or two Fridays coming up left, right? I guess one more, excluding next Friday. Yeah, so hopefully I get another one in there for sure. Okie dokie. So we have our empty trees here. If you like them the way they are, keep them. Um, but I kind of picture this all a very snowy wonderland. So I put some snow on top of these guys. You can see in my original, there's some white kind of dotted on here. Marine, welcome in, hi. I'm in the middle of a tutorial, so I'm sorry there's no alert, but I see you in the chat. I see you, I see you, welcome in. Welcome in to you and your four people. Your crew, giving you a nice little shout out. Oops, that's not a shout out. <laughs> I'm so good at those. There you go. David, thanks for contributing. I'll talk to you in a second, okay, Marine? I'm just gonna teach this next step real quick for those following along, but welcome in, thanks for the raid. Got my medium round brush, everybody. I've washed it off. And I'm just grabbing some white paint. Uh, same as the mountains, I don't wanna cake on the paint. I don't wanna blob on the paint. I'm just kind of wiping it on my brush a little bit. And I'm pretty much just lightly tapping on top of what I already have. So kind of doing the same thing as you did with the purple, just following that same shape, just a little less paint. So kind of lightly tapping rather than covering the whole thing because I want some purple to show through, leaving some gaps here and there. You don't need to be as consistent with like where you're tapping. You're just layering it on. Very lightly, you can see it's just kind of softly coming off. I'll zoom in. 
keep forgetting I'm able to do that. And again, I go, I go less than I think. I can always add more. So I'm going to very lightly go ahead and then I'll start to cake on some more later. If you go the opposite by accident, that's okay. You can always go back and re-add your purple. That'll help split it up. Okay, pod raid. Oh dear, I can't hear anything. Oh no! <laughs> Shout out. <laughs> I did it, but I'll do it again. There you go. Again, anyone who uh, would like to check out Maureen, please do. Maureen just raided us with her party of four. And feel free, Maureen. <laughs> she said she can't hear me, so I'm typing to her. <laughs> Tapping it on. You can see it makes it again nice and textured like there's some snow layered on just lightly tapping a little amount of paint. Okay, cool. <laughs> Did you see me? Ty I was typing to you. I was like, she can't hear me. I gotta talk to her in the chat. Yeah, Maureen, if you want to talk about anything you're working on, please let me know. I, uh, I won't be showing anything just because I'm in the middle of the tutorial. It's a little bit messy to be switching screens like that. Um, but yeah, type in the chat whatever you're working on. I'm happy to talk about it with you. I'd love to know personally, yeah. But otherwise, big shout out, big shout out. All right, same thing. I'm just, again, small amount of paint, flatten my brush, just kind of lightly tapping at the top and then I'll start to tap a little harder as I go down. Again, leave a few gaps too. If you're nervous about how many, just like leave a little gap, leave a little gap. That way you still get some nice purple showing through. Just working on a watercolor still life study. Ooh, some fruit. Ooh, cool, cool, cool. Um, what I can do is I can share like your socials. If you have an Instagram, maybe that's where your fruit is displayed. I'd love to do that for you. Just whisper it to me. I have Twitch pulled up right here. I'll, I'll look at the whispers. And again, just for my own personal knowledge, I would love to follow you on Instagram because I'm so bad at following other, <laughs> other streamers on Instagram and other artists, so. Feel free to link us up. Our Chappy, no worries. Um, again, congrats on your auction. That's huge. And uh, hope to see you again. I'll check out your uh, work in progress a little later in the Discord. Thanks for dropping in. Cool, cool. Yep, yep. Yeah, whispers. It'll be it'll be bonked if you do it in the chat here. So just whisper it whenever you're ready, and I will link it for you. So yeah, I'm just going back. I'm adding maybe a little more snow. I just kind of like having some piles that are a little bit, a little bit thicker. It kind of offsets things rather than the same consistency. So I'll just kind of choose certain areas, no particular reason, just to cake on a little more paint. It helps kind of split it up a bit more. I see your whisper. Thank you so much. Thanks. Follow. If anyone wants to check out Marine Bio Artist, that's the same name on Insta. Please do, please do. Oh, dope. I've never seen what you do before. Oh, I love that you do it on text pages. That's so cute. Yo, these are so cool. I remember you said you do sea life and stuff like that with marine biologists and all that in your name. That's so cool to see it in person. Yay! Cool. Anyone who's interested, please check out her Instagram. Yes. Yeah, you're welcome. And I saw you go online too, and obviously I was streaming. I was like, I can't watch! <laughs> I just want to watch everyone that I'm on. <laughs> there we go. I think that's pretty good. I'll zoom you out. You can see what it looks like, and then we'll move on to the polar bears. There we go. Mish, done for the night. No worries. I hope you were able to follow along despite the uh, buffering issues. You know, you know, as usual, feel free to message me if you need help with anything, but otherwise you can watch this on YouTube soon, on Twitch immediately after I'm done. But yeah, we're, we're pretty much almost there. We got just the polar bears. So thanks for joining in, Mish. There we go. Cool. 
We got polar bears and we got a shooting star. I can't forget that. <laughs> Just in case anyone wants the shooting star, I can't forget that. And again, your custom painting. If you're not into polar bears, add a different animal. Add no animals. Do whatever you want. I was, I got better. Good, good, good. I'm so glad. I'm so glad. Excellent, excellent. Cool. Well, have a good night. Have a good night, Mish. Thanks for joining in. Okay. So for these little polar bear friends, you're going to want a nice teeny tiny brush, of course. So I'm grabbing my little small brush here. I'll be using mostly white paint. And then I'll be highlighting, not highlighting, excuse me, I'll be shading with different colors. So start with white. And white's a nice good color to use too because it'll be easy to correct, right? You're right in the middle of the snow here, polar bear in the snow classic. Um, if you mess up, you can always just kind of streak in some blues and purples, kind of cover it up, try again. But for now, we're just going to go for it with some white paint and a teeny tiny brush. Um, I'm going to do mama bear first and then baby bear. So I'm going a little bit further to the right and leaving a gap over here for baby bear. I'll try and go nice and slow step by step with kind of like the shape that I'm using. If you want to just look at my original and kind of copy the shape, you're welcome to do that. Just kind of following the outline and then making your own. Uh, but I'll do my best to walk you through it here. So I'm going to start on the top kind of back of the polar bear. So I'm starting at the butt actually, and then I'll kind of move over a bit. So I'm starting with a nice curve kind of coming up and across. So this is a nice butt. Nice little curve to start. And when I was looking at references of polar bears, I know this part kind of looks a little funny, but it makes sense. Um, there's quite like the shoulder blade popping up, I guess, as the polar bear is walking. So I do quite the abrupt bump right around here, right after that first curve. I do a nice big old bump like that. It's kind of the shoulder blade, I think, kind of popping out. So that's what that big bump is. I know it looks kind of funny, but in the references I saw, that's what was going on. So I added it in. Ash, welcome in. Mmm, polar bear butt. <laughs> Best butt around. How have you been, Ash? Oh, thank you, Penny. Yeah, thank you. See, I, I forget. I'm like, I can do this now. Look at that. Look at that. Thank you so much, Penny. Beautiful. Hopefully that's good and we can leave room for the little guy. So again, yeah, curve up a nice, like, casual curve. And then big old bump right there, the shoulder blade. If you start to fill in as you go, that's okay. I'm just trying to keep an outline so you can kind of see it a little bit better. Busy. Yeah, you're like finishing up school, aren't you? Got some night catching people. All right, lovely. Didn't you have exams coming up like real soon? Yeah, you're welcome, Penny. Thanks for reminding me again, new setup. I'm like, I can zoom in now, this is great. <laughs> Calm sigh, right, Ash? So nice abrupt bump. Uh, now we're going to do the head. So the head has another small bump. So after coming back down, we kind of go up, down again. That quick up, down is like the little ear of the polar bear. And then I bring it down and over to make the little snout. So down to the right, and I kind of curve around to make the little snout, the little nose. Yeah, and two weeks projects before that. Okay, you're almost there. Why do I feel like last time you were here, Ash, you're like two more weeks, and now it's like two more. <laughs> I'm just not keeping track. <laughs> yeah, Woods here, look at that butt. He got his butt approved. Yes, you know it. <laughs> I did. Mar uh, Marnie, Marnie, that's right. I'm glad you had a great time. Again, feel free to check this out on YouTube if you want those last few steps, but otherwise I'm so glad you joined in, thank you. All right, so I've curved around for the snout. I'm gonna curve in, because we wanna make sure we can see the head, kind of like the head and the neck. So we have that ear, snout, back in. Oops, see I went a little too far. I'm just gonna rub that away. White is very easy to work with. Just rub it away, blend it in somewhere, it's fine. Just trying to make sure this is big enough. I want to make sure I'm not making a small size polar bear on my end here. I think he's good. Okay. Uh, now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to quickly like cut across and finish up the body. And then I can add all the little legs and feet in. So he's just a floating body right now. He's just a little bean of a... <laughs> bean of a polar bear. 
add in all the nice little legs and stuff. You can fill it in if you want. I'm just going to fill it in so hopefully you can see him better. Next week is the last week of classes, then week after finals. Gotcha. Okay. Oh my gosh, you can do it. And then you're like done done, right? Oh man, that's going to feel so good. I remember the feel. You got a nice big break after Christmas break. Oh man. I hope it all goes well. I hope you're feeling confident about everything. I know it's always pretty stressful, but I'm sure you'll get through it. All right, so now I'm gonna add some legs and I'll warn you, the legs look a little bit cluttered before we add the blue as the shading. That's why I added it in so you can kind of see separation. So if your legs look a little cluttered, don't worry, we'll fix that a little later. Uh, I'm gonna start on the back end by the butt. We're gonna come down. So I'm leaving a little bit of a, of a round edge here, kind of coming down and to the left, and then I'll do a quick little foot. Just kind of like a quick little curve at the end. Nice thick thigh, so we're gonna make sure it's nice and wide at the top. So again, kind of angling down to the left, doing a cute little foot, angling up to the right, widening it as it goes. So a nice thick thigh coming up. And it looks a little stubby, but we're going to carry this up with some blue later, so it'll kind of lengthen it up. Can't wait, I already bought two balls at one. Oh, yes! You know how to do it. Pre-celebrate, I love it. That's just planning ahead, dude. You know what you're doing. <laughs> mm-hmm. That'll be so nice to treat yourself with that. All right, so that one leg is kind of trailing behind. Second leg is kind of coming forward a bit. So these are the two back legs back and then a little more forward. So this one is going right beside the other one. There's maybe a tiny bit of a gap. We're gonna move it um, over to the right. The foot kind of goes a little more flat this time. Same thing and we wanna make sure a nice wide thigh so we keep it nice and thin and then we widen the thigh as it comes out or comes up rather. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Two more legs. So now I leave a bigger gap because we have kind of the belly area. We're gonna do another kind of angled, kind of down to the right a little bit. Little curved foot. Same thing, widen the top. So this one's kind of like coming straight down again, kind of similar to this one, just kind of planted. And then the last one is again angled kind of out to the right, like he's taking a step. So we're gonna come down, go a little right. And I make the foot kind of pointing down to the left as if the paw is, uh, yeah, taking a nice little step. It's just like, you know, kind of bent in a little. Same thing, wind the thigh a bit. I'm trying to just match proportions a bit, trying to get the feet all around the same size. There he is, taking a nice little step. Doe, you're all good? All good, awesome. Glad you had a good time. Thanks for joining in. Maybe I'll see you another time. Cute. So he's just a plain little polar bear. Uh, once he's all kind of put together, you can really kind of point out things that you might want to just adjust a little bit. Like I said, proportions and stuff. For example, I think I want to maybe bring the ear and head out a little bit more. So I'm just kind of pointing the ear a bit, bring the snout out a little more, kind of make the head a little more forward. But yeah, you can kind of see um, as a whole, if you'd rather wait until we add the shading, because that will change a few things in here, you can do that too. But I just kind of saw that immediately, so I fixed it. Again, the nose, I still want a little pointier. Cute. So that's little mama bear, or larger mama bear. We got little baby bear right beside, trailing behind, so I leave a little bit of a gap. Um, you can follow pretty much the same instructions. I would say the shoulder blade on the baby is a little less prominent because he's a little smaller. But yeah, he's just pretty much a mini version of what we just did. So I'll try my best to go a little quicker but re-explain what I did. 
Again, I like to start at the butt. I'm gonna do a nice little curve like this. And of course, just making everything smaller and quicker, right? Little butt. Not really doing a shoulder blade. I'm just gonna go right into the nice little curve up ahead. Do a little, do a little ear kind of popping up. Doing a little snout. Again, I just kind of like tuck it around, kind of connect that belly so I can not, I don't need to worry about the body, I just need to worry about the legs once that's all connected. And then same thing, I pretty much follow the same pattern of these legs, like one is trailing behind, one's more straight, one's more straight, one's forward. So uh, yeah, kind of angling out a little bit with the toe kind of facing into the, into the snow there. And a little smaller so if it's a little less detailed or a little more messy that's okay it's nice and small got a leg coming more straight down uh, I gotta go hope you have an amazing rest of your day oh you too Luigi oh rest of your stream excuse me I thought you said night <laughs> have a great stream as well <laughs> um. <laughs> When you go to the movies, have a great movie. You too. Anyway, <laughs> maybe I'll see you for another tutorial next week if you get your art supplies ready. But uh, yeah, either way, I just hope you do some art soon. Painting, any art in general. But have a great evening. Okay, we leave a little gap. We do a third leg coming more straight down. Thick thigh. And then I pointed out at the start, but the reason I loved this little baby polar bear reference so much, I used references online when I was painting these, is that he had such an outstretched leg, like he was like ready to conquer his walk, so I just really want to make sure I have a really, really outstretched, like, exaggerated leg. I just love it. He's like, yeah, <laughs> I'm walking. So I just really like curve it out this time. His paw is facing up, he's just like, again, ready to go, so. Even though it looks kind of obnoxiously large compared to the others, I think it looks super, super cute. So that's what I'm doing. He's just like, yeah, one foot in front of the other, following mom. There he is, so cute. So are you streaming on Facebook right now as well, or just a link if you don't? Oh, no, of course. Uh, I'm curious. Yeah, so I used to do that, Marine. <laughs> and then I found out you're not supposed to do that. <laughs> Um, exclusive rights on Twitch. Also though, I had a lot of problems with the uh, platform itself. I had a lot of issues with like going live at points. So the answer is no, I'm not streaming live on Facebook right now. I just have a Facebook community. So um, I post events on Facebook, but I don't stream there anymore. I, uh, I move everyone here instead because it's just more consistent. I think the quality is way better. I wouldn't be able to do this multiple camera setup on Facebook. Like there's so much more I can do here, so. Uh, the answer is no. I used to, but no. I just link it for photo sharing too. Left my snow a little more white so polar bears are not going to show up. That's okay. I'm gonna leave the bears out of mine. Sounds good. Thanks for a great tutorial. Of course, Sharon. I'll probably see you tomorrow. Sounds good. Sounds good. I'm so glad you're able to join in today. <laughs> Even if you almost drank the paint water, all good. <laughs> but yeah, um, leave those polar bears out if you want. I'll see you tomorrow. I'll be on uh, 10 to 3 as usual. Ish. 10 to 3 ish. Have a good night. Also, those pair of polar bears look so adorable right now, even with an eyes and nose. Thank you! Yeah, I think they're kind of cute, like a little more hidden, but I'm about to add a few details to them. Diana looks great. Hope you had a restful night. Thank you! Thanks, and I like the baby. Thanks, me too. He's my favorite with the little leg. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, Maureen, yeah, if you have more questions about it, let me know. I'm happy to answer them. But yeah, that was brought to my attention. <laughs> But also, again, I had a lot of issues with the platform. Not the people, it's like the streaming platform. It was problematic a lot. Okay, so I'm just gonna detail these guys up now. Uh, what I'm gonna do first is I'm going to add some shading. So the shading, like I said, is going to help kind of cur carve out the legs a little bit. Um, just like, yeah, adds a little bit more detail. And then I'm gonna use the dark purple to do some little eyes and nose and even a little smile if you want as well. Mine don't look my polar bears. Oh no, Charlene. Are you able to um, write what's up with them? Or if you want, as usual, send me a photo. I can have a look and give you some advice. 
whenever you feel. I get it. Um, animals are hard. <laughs> they are, honestly. They very much intimidate me too, that's why I avoid them usually in tutorials, but sometimes I whip them out, so... Just send me a quick little photo, I'm happy to help you. Okay, so I'm just mixing a nice blue-white mixture. So it's like a medium blue, it's not super dark, not super light. And I'm just kind of looking at the back side, so if, assuming like the, the uh, light front side is up here, like the light source is up here, we're gonna have some darker lines on the back end. So for example, I'm just going to do a nice little curved line kind of curving around the back end, um, along the back edge of this leg. And also I'll be using the blue to kind of extend the legs too, so if I want to show that this leg goes further into the body, like it's a longer leg because it's in front, so closest to us, you can use a little bit of blue just to like extend it up and then that way it looks like it's coming into the body. Like the rest of the thigh is up here rather than like a shorter leg here. Otherwise just kind of working on the back end here, maybe the bottom of the paw, maybe like the bottom of the belly, down here. Things like that, just kind of touching up some edges. I don't outline the whole thing, just working on the back ends. Maybe over here. So you again extended it up into the body, so it looks like this one's behind, this one's in front. Maybe just a little on the ear, a little on the back side. It's probably good. Same thing on Bebe. And again, if your lines are a little thick, just grab more white, cover them up as you go, or after they dry, doesn't matter. Again, it can all be fixed. I just think it adds a little bit more shading. I think the blue's a nice complement to the white as well. It's not too harsh. Optional, optional, all of it's optional. Okay, and then a last little detail for the polar bears. I'm just grabbing some more of that dark purple. So purple made by mixing red and blue. I just add some tiny little features. So they're going to appear very dark, of course, because they're on top of the white. Um, I like to hit kind of the one ear, as if you're kind of seeing a little inside of the ear. I like to, of course, do a little dot for an eye. I do a little dot for the nose, so that's going at the end of the snout. Maybe it's a little bigger, tapping just a little more. And if you want to try a little smile, I did that. <laughs> so I just wipe the brush on the edge of my plate to make sure my bristles are all lined up and I just try and do a small little like horizontal or curved line just below the, uh, the nose there. Same thing on Mama. There's the ear. So just kind of, yeah, doing a little Hole in the ear, a nice little dot for the eye, it's just kind of to the bottom right of the ear. Big old nose on the end. And then just a little curve of a smile or just like straight across, whatever you want. Cool. Zoom out, see how it looks. And again, don't be caught up with like looking so close at it. Like you don't need to zoom in like I was. Look at it further back, see how it looks. See if you can point out anything that looks a little funny. Is it the face? Is it the back? Is it the overall shape? And fix as you need. I think my ear could have been maybe a little higher. I think it looks a little sunken, but I'm just gonna let it dry. You can put some white on top and fix it up. That's okay. While we have this purple, we're still gonna use it. We're gonna use it for some little footprints. I guess I could have kept zoomed in, but that gives you, yeah, it gives you a nice zoomed out look. It's so different when you zoom out. If you're a little worried about shapes and details, zooming out gives you a nice uh, accurate representation of what you're actually looking at there. Ninja, I'm headed out for the night. Thanks for the tour. Oh, you're always welcome. May join you next time and get some art supplies started. Nice, nice, yeah. If you have any questions about supplies in the meantime, let me know on Discord. Um, but yeah, hope you're able to find some and join in next time. That'd be so fun. Have a good evening. All right. 
Uh, yep, some footprints are next, so just using the same purple. I literally just do little ovals, and they go back and forth, kind of zigzagging. So they go left side, right side, left side, right side, left side, maybe a little on the right. Maybe there's a footprint like being made here, I don't know, just a little underneath. Something like that. Just little divots in the snow. Need to head off, long work day. Sounds good, Marion, no problem. Sounds good, sounds good. Again, message with any questions, but otherwise this will be available on YouTube soon. And you're like so close to the end anyway, so all good. Have a good evening. Back and forth. I'm gapping these maybe a little more because Mama Bear has some larger legs. Back and forth and back. Ta-da. I mean, technically there might be a little footprint here and here from those ones, so add those if you want. Yeah. Cute. Just gonna zoom out. Oops. There we go. Ash, gotta go work out so I lurk while I do set. Sounds good. <laughs> Thanks for the noodle dance. He's so cute. Is that how energetic you are when working out? Oh my gosh. <laughs> ready to go, ready to go. Fun chatting with you, Ash. Enjoy your workout. <laughs> so pumped. <laughs> work it out, work it out. Noodle dance, work it out. All right, so again, last step. <laughs> Even though it's like not really the last one, I could have just done it in the sky, a shooting star. I just don't want to forget it in case anybody wanted it. And I, I distinctly remember adding it at the end. I'm pretty sure um, someone in chat said, do a shooting star and I just added it in last. So it's appropriate that we're doing it last. So if you want to add a little detail to your sky, I'm just grabbing white paint on my teeny tiny brush. I'm doing a nice little dot, maybe like right here. I place the dot down. Bonnie, thanks for the follow. Welcome in. I place the dot down. I wash my brush off so there's no extra paint. And then while the paint is still wet and kind of in a blob, I simply put my brush in there and drag it out. So I just kind of wiped it up and across, kind of in a nice curve. And that dragged the paint over. That gives you a nice little tail. It's nice and faded out. I could have zoomed you in on that. I'm learning, I'm learning. <laughs> I'll do a second one, why the heck not? White. Let's do two shooting stars, just a magical evening. Mr. Doctor, thank you for, oh, thank you for raiding. As you know, I'm in my tutorial, so there's no alerts, but I'm happy to shout you out if the shout out even works. Hello, hello. There you are, thank you. Oh, you're playing Pokemon? Tell me about that. <laughs> Again, the, the plain white dot, nice and wet, taking a clean brush right inside the paint, stroking it away. Do it a second or third time if you need to even it out, but that's pretty much it. You can see it just fades away naturally because there's a tiny amount of paint just goes, kind of scrapes across. If you need to re-add a little white at the end just to like make it extra bright, go ahead. That's pretty much the one. Again, thanks to the raid, Mr. Doctor. You tiny raid. It's still a raid. Did you have a good stream? I hope so. Again, playing Pokemon. That sounds fun. Hi, hi, hi. Just started like two days ago. Oh yeah, it's only gonna be like a week thing. It'll be fun. Cool, cool. Have you played it before? Or it's brand new for you. All right, zooming you out, guys. That was the last step. Even though, again, it kind of out of order, but oh well. <laughs> the last step. Okay, so bonus step is to sign your painting. Feel free to give it a quick little signature in the bottom corner. Whenever you're done, I always like to leave it for the very last step to kind of like signify that it's all done. I'm just using a little pink, very, very lightly. There's the bottom corner done. Nice, there we go. Artist Christina Davis, welcome in. Yeah, it does have a Narnia feel. Ooh, yeah, it kind of does, doesn't it? Um, Golden Compass-ish? Something like that? Welcome in, by the way. Okay, so everybody, 
Um, thanks for coming to the tutorial. If you're still painting, feel free to keep painting. Feel free to keep hanging out. I'll hang out here for at least five to ten more minutes. We'll see. Um, yeah, if you guys are chatty, want to chat some more, I'm happy to hang out. Um, fully focused on your questions now. Uh, before everyone leaves, though, uh, I'll encourage you, please, please, please post your photos. I love seeing what everyone made. Thank you, Groki. Perfect timing. Those are all the social links right there. Um, you can go to Facebook to post if you want. There's lots of options. I'll kind of walk you through it here, actually, because um, I need to open up this page for sharing anyway. Uh, give me a quick second. Event settings. There we are. That should be fine. Update. Cool. All right. So on Facebook, if you go to my Facebook page, go to events. You want to click on the event that this corresponded to. So that's this one here. If you go to discussion, you can now add a post. I posted, you can post your photo. All right, post a photo, post whatever you want, like post a little statement or whatever to say, here's mine. It's just really lovely to see all the photos together. Um, if you like, you can post to uh, Twitter, you can post to Instagram, you can tag me, Aaron Bun Paints. Uh, Discord if you'd like, if for those on uh, Twitch who prefer Discord, feel free to use that. Um, I'll switch to here. Uh, yeah, just share your photos. We love seeing what you do. And it's just so cool to see them all put together, how we all created something like similar but different. We're all putting our own twists on them. So it's kind of extra special to see them all together online. So please do that. Um, thanks for all the support tonight, guys. There was a lot of support at the start. If anyone was looking to support me further, um, there's lots of options. Thank you, Gray. Just put the tips link there. So thanks so much. There's Interact, eTransfer, PayPal via credit card uh, with that Streamlabs link there. All of that works. If you want to support me through subscriptions, again, Gray linked those. Thank you so much. Those are um, descriptions about what subscriptions are. Rhymes, yes. Um, again, if you have Amazon Prime, you can subscribe for free, which means I get money and it doesn't cost you money, which is like the coolest thing ever. So if you have questions about that, the info is there. Um, and again, just attending helps me too. Just you guys hanging out, watching me helps. So if you want to attend uh, next week's tutorial, we're doing this uh, this tree. Um, if you want to hang out with me in between then, I'm on Twitch a lot, a lot. I always post my schedules up on Facebook and on Discord so you can check out when I'll be online next. But generally it's like during the day so if you want to throw me on as you're working from home or cooking or whatever, like I can be your company, I can be your background guy so feel free to throw me on. It helps me immensely to have uh, people watching so thank you for that and it's free to do. Um, I think that's all. Yeah, tutorial next Friday. Keep your eye on all the socials for more tutorials, more streaming schedules, all that good stuff. <laughs> I think I hit it all. I'm just gonna catch up on comments now.